And the idea here is that we're going to take a color photo, a full color photo in Photoshop. We're going to start by turning it black and white and then we are going to bring areas of color back into the image. So what we're trying to do is emphasize parts of the image. We have to figure out what it is we want to draw the viewer's attention toward and then we're going to add some type to it to create what is known as a meme. And I actually looked up what a meme is. Did you guys ever look up what a meme is when you when you have these words and you're, you're like, I don't know where it came from. Do you know what meme is? It comes from the Greek word meaning imitation to copy something and to, and to pass it on. Okay, so we're gonna make a selective color meme. We've got Captain America open. Let's go ahead and decide if we wanna crop this. So when you're creating a meme, you have to have some area that you want to put your text in and you want the composition to work well. And I think what's happening here is we have a little bit too much room on the left and the right. We need to decide how we wanna cut this or how we want to crop it, some areas that we want to eliminate. So what I would suggest is that uh, we cut off, let's go ahead and cut off a little bit of this extra space on the right. Now we don't want to cut him off at the forearm or at the elbow or at the shoulder because that's going to be a little weird that he, he'll, ha he'll be missing his left arm. Uh, but we do want to get rid of some of that extra space. So let's go ahead right now and grab the rectangular marquee tool that's over here in the toolbar on the left looks like a dotted box or a dotted rectangle so everyone go ahead and select that tool and then what we're going to do is we're going to drag a box that goes around Captain America and we're going just past his wrist right there and letting go so if you look at where my selection is it goes just past his wrist so we're going to be eliminating this little bit on the right side here. We don't need that extra space. So everyone make that selection. If you miss to deselect, hold command and press D as in dog or deselect. So we're going to go command D if you missed and then you can try again. If it looks good, if it looks like what I've got here on the screen, you'll go up to the top where it says image, all the way to the top of your screen where it says image, and then go down to where it says crop and click. And when you go image crop, what happens is it cuts off that unwanted area. So that's how we crop a digital photo. Now this is something that we have not done before in Photoshop. We've made new layers. Uh, we've seen new layers have happened. But how do you copy an entire layer? Let me show you how to do this. Watch the screen up here and then copy what I do. So we're going to take this background layer. If you don't have layers, now if, if some of you are going, wait, I don't have that thing that he's talking about up there. If you don't have layers, you can go up to Window and just click on Layers, and then your layers will show up. So look for your Layers panel over here. It says Layers. And then we're going to go ahead and drag the background layer. This is the background layer right here that has Captain America on it. We're going to drag it down to the new layer icon down here which is next to the trash can, and then let go. Now what just happened? I have a <laughs> duplicate of that background layer. So I drag that down and let go, and now your layers palette should be set up like this. We have to make sure you're here before we move on. So check with a neighbor if you don't have it, and, and turn and say, what did, what did we just do? And they'll help you out. All right, so now you have a background copy. It's identical, so the image itself doesn't look any different because we just copied it. But now we're going to make it look a little bit different. We're going to turn the image black and white. Okay, so at the top of the screen, we're going to go to Image. Then we'll go to Adjustments. And then we're going to go over and down to where it says black and white. And I want to take a second to show you what's happening here. And then I want to give you a couple seconds to mess around with this to see what happens. So I want you guys right now to just pay attention to my screen and watch what's happening before you get all wrapped up in this. So we went to image adjustments, black and white. So we turned the image black and white. But if you notice, you've got all these different color channels. These are called color channels. They're like channels on your television. And what you can do is you can take what was red and you can either darken it 
or lighten it. Look what's happening on my screen. When I darken it or lighten it, it's very different, right? You get a completely different image when you start ripping these little sliders back and forth. Now, if the image doesn't have a lot of that color, you're not going to see a lot of this change. So for instance, I think green, right? Green, look at what's happening. Almost nothing because there is no green in this image. So what I want you guys to do is make the black and white photo look good. Now what many people will do with Photoshop is they'll just desaturate. They'll just take the color and rip it out and they'll be like, well, that must be what it looks like in black and white. But it's much better to do what we just did, make a copy of the layer, you have to make sure you make a copy of it, and then turn it with this black and white adjustment which gives you the ability to change the way that it looks so we can move those sliders. All right, the next step, making what we call the color blocks so or the selective color. We're selectively going to bring color back into the image and I would say this is the most challenging part of the project and the most time consuming part of the project because we're gonna use something new called a layer mask and you're going to have to learn how to paint in Photoshop with a brush and a mouse, okay? So we're gonna go ahead now and set it up so that we could bring some areas of color back. In the bottom of the layers palette, look for this thing that looks like the Japanese flag and click on it. And what's going to happen is, if you look in your layers palette now, you have this extra little box next to the black and white Captain America. See it? You have it? We're good. Now this is called the layer mask. What a layer mask does is it allows you to cover up things without damaging the photo. So we're not gonna damage Captain America. We're not just gonna start erasing and coloring on Captain America. We're gonna color on this extra little piece of paper here called the layer mask. Everywhere that I paint black on this mask is going to cover up what's on this layer and reveal what's on the layer below it. So we're gonna click on the paintbrush tool. Be careful when you do this. I'm zooming in here so that you guys can see it. In the tool palette, there is a paintbrush this is the one we want right here. Now I want you to look down here at the bottom of the tool palette. So where we just selected the brush, you come down here. Do you guys have black on white or do you have white on black? I have gray on black. All right, so everybody said something different, that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and press the letter D. Just press D on the keyboard once. And now what I want you to do is press X on the keyboard. When you press X, watch what happens to these two things. They flip. So once you press D, it makes it default colors. And when you press X, it flips these. What you need to have this work is you need to have black on top of white. So this is called the foreground color and this is called the background color. We need this to be black. So what we now have is a paintbrush that is loaded with black. We haven't done anything yet. We just have our brush set up. And now I want you to look along the top of your screen. Along the top of your screen when you're on the brush palette, we're gonna work our way across here and we're gonna set up some things. The first one is, this is your brush size. If you want to, you can click the little down arrow right here and you can adjust the size of your brush so you can make the brush bigger or smaller. I will show you another way how to do that in a little bit. The other thing we have control of is the hardness of the brush. So if I want the brush to be a really hard edge, like a, a marker, then I would have the hardness at 100%. If I want it to be soft, like a spray paint, like a spray can, like a soft edge, airbrush type of thing, I would lower this. Or you could put it somewhere in between. For right now, let's just go with 100% hardness and let's use a brush size of about 40. We want to try to color just the red and blue parts of Captain America's shield. So what we're gonna do is leave the entire image black and white, but we're going to just color the red and blue parts of Captain America's shield. Now when you do this, look what happens. Go ahead and take your mouse and start coloring. Now the other things that I wanna show you, a couple little tricks to make things go easier for you. Uh, you can make your brush bigger or smaller without having to go up to the top of the screen. So check this out. Look up, guys. Next to the P on your keyboard, there are two little bracket keys. 
next to the P and under the plus and minus. If you press the bracket key that is located under the plus, it makes your brush bigger. You see my brush, how it can make it bigger or smaller? If you hit the bracket key under the minus, it makes your brush smaller. So you don't have to keep going up to the top, be like a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. You could stay right here. I like to keep my left hand, because I'm right-handed, I keep my left hand on the two bracket keys. So I could bracket down and get a tiny brush for little areas of detail, and I could bracket up to get a bigger brush to cover more area. All right, first thing is, make sure that you are right here. Now in your layers palette, make sure that you're right here. If you go here, you're going to ruin this because what you'll be doing if you're here is painting black like with a black Sharpie marker right over the photo and it's not gonna work. So make sure that you're always here on the mask. The other question, I'm gonna go ahead and make a mistake here on purpose, watch. You're painting along and you accidentally go out of the lines a little bit like this. You're like, oh no, I made a mistake, is it ruined? No, here's what you do, look up. If you flip these two, so right now when you color with black, it reveals color. But if I flip this to white, now it works like an eraser. Okay, so if you color with black, it shows color. If you color with white on the mask, it brings it back to black and white. So when you're painting, if you're working your way around here and you make a mistake, now you could fix it by coloring with white. How do I go back to coloring with color? I flip it back like this, flip it back to black. And if you click, watch what I'm gonna do right here. I'm gonna click once, and then I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna click again, and it's gonna make straight lines. This is called shift clicking. So if you wanna make straight lines with the brush, you hold shift, and you click with the brush, and it's like connect the dots, okay? You don't have to do that, but if you are working on your own and that's something that is gonna help you make straight lines, then clicking with the brush and then holding shift and clicking again to connect the dots is a lot easier than trying to have a steady hand and going around, around all those edges. All right, so for our meme, what we're going to do is put uh, the text, be the hero of your own story. That's the quote that I selected. So at this point, we've enhanced the shield, we've made that in color, that's the selective color component. So we're going to use the type tool for the first time. It's in the toolbar over here and it's just a T, a regular T. So we're gonna click one time and you should get a blinking cursor, a blinking line. Your blinking line might be really small the first time you use the type tool. So you click and you get this blinking cursor line. That means that you're, it's ready for you to start typing. Now I want you to look across the top of the screen and set up your font or your type the way that I'm showing you here. The font that we're gonna use is called Helvetica New. Helvetica New is a pretty standard meme font and these are in alphabetical order. So when you click on the type tool, you could scroll up and down the list. We're looking for H and we're gonna find Helvetica New. Now we're also going to choose the way we want the font to look, like bold, italics, how do we want it to look? We're gonna go ahead and choose condensed black. And what condensed black means is that it's extra bold and the letters are going to be closer together and that just looks, it has a little more impact. It's just the style of the font. So we picked the font, now we're picking the way that we wanna style the font. So we've got Helvetica New, we got condensed black, and now for size. If you notice something about size, if I click on the down arrow here at the top, it looks like 72 is the maximum size of a font, but that's not true. What you can do, watch what I'm gonna do here, is you can go on these T's, and if you go on the T's and you drag to the right, the number goes higher, and if you drag to the left, it goes lower. So we wanna go about 145, 146, 144, somewhere in this 140 something. Don't worry about this where it says sharp. For right now, we're gonna leave this left aligned or left justified. You could choose center or right justified if you wanted to, but I know this is gonna work for us. And now let's go ahead and change the color of the font. Right here, this black box. Let's make it white. So if I click on the black box, you'll get the color picker. 
and I want to go all the way up in the upper left corner here to white and then click OK. Now we're going to click the move tool. Okay. Now once you're done typing, the move tool are the arrows. We've used this tool before several times. You're going to click the move tool and that is going to set the type. Setting the type means that it's stuck. We're making the type stick. Now we can reposition it where we want. Do we want it to go here? Do we want it to be more along his shoulder? I cheated a little bit. I've done this before and I know it's going to work. But when you guys do this, you're going to have to figure out what size does it need to be? How does it need to be aligned? How is the spacing supposed to look? And I'm going to show you how we can fine tune that a little bit. So what you're going to do is go over into your layers palette here and you will double click the T in front of the text. Double click two times right there. And what that does is get you back into the menu that you saw along the top. And now we're looking for this thing. We're looking for this thing that looks like file folders. This is your paragraph and character settings. So when you look on this little thing right here, you click on it, you're going to get these options here. Character and paragraph. Now if you want your type to look more like mine, start to set these numbers. Okay? This should say optical. I had to change that. And then I've got my size here, the line spacing here. This is the space between the lines. This is the space between the letters, so I'm squeezing them together even a little bit more. This is the height of the letters, and this is the horizontal width of the letters. And this is probably something that you've never messed with before. Like when you're typing a paper in Microsoft Word, maybe you change your font. But you've never figured like, oh, how am I going to have the letter spacing? How am I going to have the line spacing? So the character and paragraph font or palettes or panels allows you to make those changes and fine tune those letters so that they look exactly the way that you intend them to look. And then click your move tool again when you're finished. Uh, we can go ahead and enhance the text a little bit more by either changing the font. There's a way that you can download fonts from the internet. You can talk to me about how to go about doing that if there's some specific theme that you want with a certain font and you don't want it to be the standard Helvetica meme font. Uh, the other thing that you could do is separate the text from the image a little bit more and we could do this with layer effects. If you look in the bottom of your layers palette you can see a little FX button and there are several different effects that you can place on a layer. In this case it's our text layer so we're going to go ahead and just put a simple drop shadow on the text. And what a drop shadow will do, you can choose the color right here if I wanted to make this a red drop shadow to kind of go along with the image. You can see I'm sampling colors from the image. So that looks kind of neat to have that dark reddish color, not just a standard black. Then you can go through and you can adjust the opacity, which is how much of it you want to see. We can fade it out or leave it at 100%. You can actually move the drop shadow around the effect. So we could go right onto the screen and move the drop shadow. Uh, in this case, I have it just slightly down and to the right. You could adjust the distance with the slider if you wanted to fine tune it there. The spread is how dark it is, but it, it already is dark. It's at 100% opacity. Uh, but what the size does is the size could blur it. So you can see how it softens the edge. I have my size to zero right now. If you put the size to 250, it will max it out and make it look like someone spray painted behind there. There are several different things that you can do with each one of these effects to mess around with this idea of enhancing the text. Uh, but what we're doing here is it just pops it off the photo a little bit more, makes it a little bit easier to read. When I'm done, I click OK, and you'll notice that I have a layer effect in this on this layer and it's showing me that it has a drop shadow. You could re-access this at any time. You can change it and shift it around until it is perfect. All right, the final section on the project is an enrichment challenge. And the enrichment challenge is, the, the best way to explain it would be how to move your grade from a B plus to an A. It's just sort of taking it to the next level. All right, to get right into this, we're going to go ahead and grab Captain America Shield, which I've downloaded separately. It's a different image. I'm going to take the move tool, which is over here, drag and drop this Captain America shield onto our image, and then it's too small. 
it's also on top of everything. I want it to be behind the text. So I'm going to drag this down one so that it's behind the text. And then I'm going to go ahead and hold command and press the letter T to get into the transform dialog. And then again, if I just start to rip this thing in different directions here, grab it from the side, this is not good. You don't want to do that. Once you go into Command T, you want to hold Shift and you want to drag from the corner. So dragging from the corner out. Like that. And when you're done, you press Return to set the transformation. So now we've really changed the whole thing here. It looks kind of cool like that. But let's go ahead and close that. We're done with it. So we have this image that's now floating on top of our other image and we want to blend it in a little bit. So let's go ahead and start We'll do this a little out of order, but we're going to go ahead and start with the blend mode. So we're going to go on our blend mode and try soft light. I kind of like how that looks. Or you can try difference. Ooh, that's nasty. Like that just doesn't work for me. Overlay. Uh, that's not too bad. It's a little more gritty, right? So each one of these is going to give you a slightly different effect. We're going to go with the one that is soft light. Okay. So with soft light, we want this effect to be happening in the background, but we don't want it to be happening on the figure, on Captain America. And the way that we did this, the way that we learned how to do this in the previous step, was we click on the Japanese flag, which is a layer mask. When you add a layer mask, you determine what you want to cover and what you want to see. So again, just a little fast forward situation here. We could grab a brush tool. We could make that brush really soft this time because what we want to do is blend it in and now we're going to move our opacity slider down so that our brush is not going to be 100 percent cover it up it's going to cover it up 30 percent of the time and you can see here i'm bracketing up with my i'm bracketing up my brush size with the bracket key and then i'm going to go ahead and start to brush over with black see i'm spraying black on the layer mask and I'm fading out that background where I don't want to see it. I'm going to go ahead and bracket this down and kind of stay inside of his face here. So it almost gives the, it gives the feeling that this is in the background behind him, right? And I don't need to really be too concerned about staying in the lines. I'm not worried about missing some spots because it, it gives it a little bit of texture. Right. If you want to be, if you want to get the perfect situation, if you're that type of person, you could really carefully blend this together. But you could see here all the marks that are being made. This is where I'm eliminating areas of that background. And if you just kind of, um, so this basically is the idea of a selective color meme. So we're taking an image, combining it with text to influence what people think when they read it and they see it and that combination is going to communicate a message to an audience. All right guys, that's a wrap. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Like there's like a little button that they put on the laptop or something and then they say click it and then you can never even miss a video. Hmm. That's if you subscribe.